As I have embarked on this art journey, I've been thinking a lot about originality and what it means to be original as an artist. It intrigues me that even though originality is an intangible concept, many of us pursue it as if it were something we could obtain. It's an oddly common pursuit that extends far beyond the domain of art and creativity, as many people today strive to craft a unique voice that will help them stand out from the crowd. As an artist myself, I have fallen prey to chasing originality, especially while I was a college student. It's the poor habit of constantly measuring yourself and your work up to an imaginary standard fueled by questions like, does my art have any worth? Why should anyone care about what I'm making? How can I make great art? And at its worst, most dangerous point, you start to ask yourself, how can I turn my art into a brand? Running the risk of forgetting why you made art to begin with, because you enjoyed it. While these thoughts can be debilitating and unproductive, I found solace in the fact that pursuing originality is a shared experience, yet I was perturbed by this feeling, this deep sensation that we are all approaching originality the wrong way. And as it turns out, I think we are. But what really is originality? And why do so many people strive to embody it? I've been contemplating this question a lot recently, particularly because its pursuit across history seems to weigh heavily on artists and creative people. And for many, it seems to be an integral driver of self-worth. It's surprising to see so many individuals struggle with originality because I firmly believe that it exists within all of us. The unspoken truth, however, is that originality is often suppressed by many external factors, particularly as we grow older. The act of suppressing originality has been captured in many works, but one that describes it beautifully is The Little Prince, one of my favorite children's books. In the first chapter, the author, as a child, attempts to explain his drawing of a boa constrictor that swallowed an elephant to a group of adults, but they misinterpret it as a hat. The child goes on to redraw it so that the adults can comprehend it, and instead of praising his work, they suggest that the child consider a more practical career path. While it may seem like a small incident, Repeated experiences like this can condition children away from expressing their true selves. The truth of the matter is that the long-term consequences of this conditioning play a crucial role in a person's ability to tap into originality later in life. This commonplace pattern of dissuading children from pursuing their genuine interest is a form of social conditioning that confines them to societal roles that, more often than not, have zero correlation to their passions and interests. Essentially, these roles play out like traps that constrain our potential and suppress our true identities, as seen in the case of the author of The Little Prince. I believe we are born with an instinctual understanding of what we love, but we are shaped by the world around us to better fit within it, especially if those interests hold little value in our society. In turn, we find ourselves seeking that spark that our younger selves embodied so effortlessly without even realizing it because within it lies the key to originality. But what is that spark? What is that childlike wisdom we're trying to reconnect with? In simple terms, the spark is the child's ability to be truly themselves with unhindered authenticity.
One of my childhood fascinations was drawing castles. I was inspired by the majestic structures in the Disney films I loved to watch. And from an early age, I would spend hours redrawing them until I could recreate them from memory. At one point, I created a large piece by taping multiple sheets of paper together to continue drawing when I ran out of space. Eventually, I created a mega structure castle-like building that spanned over 20 sheets of paper. Honestly, I really regret losing that drawing. I mean, how cool would it be to revisit it today? During my childhood, my parents interpreted my interest in drawing castles as a sign of potential for a career in architecture. However, as I pursued architecture in graduate school, I realized that my fascination with drawing castles had nothing to do with the construction of the built environment. The truth, which in hindsight seems so obvious, is that I drew castles because I found joy in the process. I wasn't limited by constraints, external expectations, or concerns about the worthiness of my work. I drew because I loved creating, and this passion manifested itself in my work, giving it a unique voice. This instinctual pursuit was authentically me, and because it was rooted in authenticity, the work I created was inevitably original. Herein lies the key to originality and its unequivocal connection to authenticity. I believe that originality lies in the act of being yourself, of expressing yourself authentically and genuinely. The irony, which I alluded to earlier, is that many artists and individuals spend their lives seeking originality as if there were a craft that could be honed and shaped, which is completely backwards and futile. The truth is that originality lies within the childlike spark of unadulterated authenticity, the act of being unapologetically yourself, which in essence means that what we should be striving for is not originality, but instead honing our ability to share our authentic self with the world. And I believe it is within authenticity that originality resides. Now imagine how much more original and colorful the world would be if everyone created and made decisions from a space of authenticity. I would like to take you all on a trip with me to Old San Juan as we discuss how to reconnect with our authentic selves, especially after reflecting on the profound connection between originality and authenticity. This city is one of my favorite parts of Puerto Rico, the island where I'm from, and its influence on my fascination with architecture and castles is undeniable. I thought that this would be a great place to start the conversation on how we can rediscover our authentic selves and begin to undo years of societal conditioning. Personally, I have found that delving into my childhood has been the most effective way to reconnect with my authentic self, a time before societal expectations had a chance to influence my identity. All Sin One is deeply rooted in my childhood, and therefore, it holds a special place in my heart. The process of reconnecting with my childhood has involved revisiting places that sparked wonder when I was younger, such as the old city, and even rediscovering objects that once fascinated me, looking for clues or patterns of early fascinations. However, I want to highlight that we must go beyond the surface and take a deeper look at the clues we uncover to avoid misreading and misinterpreting them, just as the adults did in The Little Prince and even in our own lives. This is something I have been conscious of myself as I recognize that a superficial interpretation of my childhood memories may lead me astray in my quest for authenticity. A 
As an example, my childhood fascination with drawing castles does not necessarily mean that I should start drawing castles as an adult. Instead, the underlying clue in this example is that I enjoy the process of translating inspiration through a variety of mediums, and it's crucial for me to remain open and receptive to inspiration, regardless of its source. Sometimes inspiration may come from castles, and sometimes it may come from a design problem. The crucial aspect is to identify our authentic state of wonder so that we can translate it through our art in a genuine way. I consider this process of examination to be an integral part of our creative art practice. Just as a sculptor would approach a raw piece of stone, rediscovering authenticity involves chiseling away at our societal armor to reveal our true selves. The clues we find in our childhood, the sparks, act like coordinates directing us where to chisel away so that we can liberate ourselves more quickly than we would without a guide. As we continue to chisel away, our work begins to align more closely with our core values and beliefs, resulting in original and genuine expressions of ourselves. I believe this is a lifelong journey that does not happen overnight, but the reward is witnessing the evolution of our work as it gradually resembles the final masterpiece, original art driven by authenticity. Lastly, I would say that reconnecting with our authentic selves requires that we believe in our ability to do so. We must believe that we can tap into our inner child and pursue what truly fascinates us. We must find in the process of reconnecting with our early passions and rediscovering the things we genuinely love doing because the art we make along the way will become artifacts documenting this journey. The ups and downs and the discoveries we make along the way will shine the light on the unique gifts we all possess, gifts waiting to be unearthed and translated by us through our art. The truth is that the world is full of wonders for everyone to experience, but each of us will interpret them differently. No matter how many people are inspired by nature, every single one of them will translate inspiration from their unique perspectives. That authenticity is the source for originality, rooted in our uniqueness and built on our life experiences, which allows us to translate those wonders and unlock their magic. This magic is perceived and translated uniquely by each one of us. I hope this video encourages you not to let society's expectations confine or discourage you from pursuing your passions. Embrace your individuality and stay true to yourself because your authenticity is your superpower and it's what sets you apart from everyone else. As long as you're being your genuine, authentic self, your art will always have an original point of view because there is only one version of you in this world. And remember, when you tap into your true self, you never know what kind of magic you might create. With that said, I am wishing you all a creativity-filled life driven by authenticity and inspiration. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel and check out one of my other videos on inspiration and drawing. I will see you on the next one. Bye.